This tutorial covers the basic controls for running on-the-fly labor or pre-programmed labor scenarios. The general functionality of the labor controls applies to both Noel and Victoria models, though certain options are available only in specific models. Let's get started. To start an on-the-fly labor, click the Fetal Monitor tab at the top of the screen. The Fetal Monitor tab houses all the controls and sensors needed for on-the-fly labor. The main area of the interface displays the fetal heart rate, contractions, and pulling force detected on the head of the baby. The panel on the right can generate on-demand intrapartum activities. These include fetal heart rate variations, contractions, shoulder dystocia, and realistic contraction responses. The lower panel is used to start the labor, adjust the speed of descent, configure cardinal movements, and monitor the progress of the labor. To begin a labor, first set up the fetus in your Victoria or Noel simulator and confirm the baby is connected as indicated by the lock icon. It will turn blue when the baby is on and communicating. To start the fetal descent, move the rate of descent slider to the desired speed. An estimated time until delivery will be shown above. Click pause to interrupt the labor, and play to resume the progress. Click the icon of the head to set the desired position of the fetus at the time of delivery. The software will automatically track the cardinal movements. To create more rotations, just click the green arrows. The blue, red, and yellow regions on the labor progress bar mark where the fetus is performing internal rotation, external rotation, and head extension. The green line represents the push-to-end threshold which simulates the final push to deliver the baby. To release the fetus lock mechanism before the end of a delivery, click the blue lock button. There are many ways to customize an on-the-fly labor. To cause a spontaneous change to the fetal heart rate, first choose the type of change from the drop-down menu, then click set. To create additional contractions, click Uterine Activity. You can program the specifics of these contractions in the Fetal Monitor subsection of the Vitals menu on the left. You can add shoulder dystocia to your delivery by clicking the box next to dystocia. Moving the numbers up or down can adjust the point in labor at which the dystocia occurs. Remember to set the vitals for the postpartum newborn before the labor ends. You can find these vitals in the fetus subsection of the vitals menu. The contraction sync box will advance the labor motor while the birthing simulator is having a contraction. If you have contraction sync on, the rate of descent slider will estimate the number of remaining contractions instead of time. Speech will generate a yell to simulate the simulator straining during contractions. Vitals will cause a momentary elevation in maternal vitals during contractions. While the labor is stopped by a shoulder dystocia, turtle signs will show with every contraction. You can generate additional turtle signs by pressing the turtle sign button. If you want an intervention to automatically resolve the dystocia, click one of the boxes below. Clicking both options will not resolve the dystocia until both have been performed successfully. If the software is not configured to automatically detect interventions, you can manually resolve the dystocia by removing the check from the box. When the labor progress passes the push-to-end threshold, the labor will progress to the end, 
and the baby will be delivered. After the baby is delivered, press the reset button to return the motor to the starting position. Then you're ready to connect the baby and start again. Next, we'll cover pre-programmed labors and custom labor scenarios. To load a pre-programmed labor or a custom labor scenario, click the Scenario tab at the top of the screen. This contains the library of simulation learning experience scenarios included with your simulator. To learn more about a specific scenario, reference your SLE facilitator's guide, or click Manage Selected Item. Then click the Details icon. To run a pre-programmed scenario, first click the desired scenario from the list, then click Load. Make sure you have the birthing fetus connected to the birthing simulator before starting a birthing scenario. The Scenario tab houses all the controls and sensors needed to follow along a pre-programmed scenario. Let's highlight the different areas of this interface. The Scenario map shows the different nodes, pathways, and events available during the scenario. Initially, the details pane shows the type of scenario, number of nodes, the description, and any pre-briefing to go over before the scenario starts. When you click a node, you can see the items contained within. These items consist of pre-programmed clinical states, trend times, pauses, speech items, lab reports that can be sent to the virtual monitor, and more. To see the details of a specific item, click the details icon, then click the details icon. To see the conditions that lead the scenario to other nodes, click to expand a pathway. Pre-programmed scenarios can also have expected participant actions to aid you in debriefing the scenario. When one pathway has all the prerequisite conditions met, the scenario will advance to the corresponding node. The graph below the scenario map shows the progress of the labor and the expected progression for the rest of the scenario. When the baby is delivered, or when the scenario ends, press the reset button to return the motor to the starting position. Then you are ready to connect the birthing fetus and start a new labor.